All right. <clears throat> so we're talking about the process of getting energy from glucose into ATP so that we can continue to cycle ATP the way we've talked about before. ATP is used, a phosphate and an ADP are left in the cell. Energy from glucose is then used to put that phosphate back onto ADP, giving you ATP in a continuously recharging battery. This process occurs in two parts. They are called glycolysis, which is an anaerobic process and does not require any oxygen or any organelles. It happens in the cytoplasm. And aerobic respiration, if we're going to get the full value of glucose, which would include the Krebs cycle and electron transport. So let's start with glycolysis. Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm did not require oxygen, doesn't require any organelles. All organisms can do glycolysis, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Glucose does get phosphorylated though, so you have to invest a little bit of uh, ATP in the process. But when glucose is broken down into two, three carbon molecules called pyruvate, you get a gain of four ATPs, which means if you've given up Two, you've invested two and you've made four, you get a net gain of two ATP. Not a lot, but enough to keep many cells going. So glucose gets into the cell, two, phosphor, two phosphates are added to it. It's broken into three carbon molecules and those three carbon molecules are called, PG, uh, called pyruvic acids or pyruvate. Uh, and It's a quick energy release, relatively simple. Organelles are not needed, oxygen is not needed. All organisms can do glycolysis. But, as we've said many times, glucose is valued at 36 ATPs. So in glycolysis, we got a couple, uh, but most of the energy in glucose is still in those pyruvate molecules. So we need to break down those pyruvate molecules if we want to get our total of 36 ATP. And that happens first in the Krebs cycle. If oxygen is present, now the Krebs cycle itself doesn't require oxygen, but electron transport does, and the Krebs cycle won't work if electron transport isn't working. So it's considered an aerobic process. If oxygen is present, the pyruvate will be transported to the mitochondria the cell powerhouse, and in the membrane system, the chemical bonds that are holding the pyruvate together are going to be broken, forming carbon dioxide and transferring that energy to high energy electrons and ATP. Now, this Krebs cycle is also called the citric acid cycle because the first intermediate we're going to create is citric acid. It's also called the tricarboxylic acid cycle because. Uh, Pyruvate has three carbons, so it's a tricarbon acid. And it's called the Krebs cycle after the lab that discovered most of these intermediates. So in the steps of the Krebs cycle, the first thing that happens is pyruvate loses a carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. The remaining two carbon molecules are called an acetyl group. They join with coenzyme A, a carrier molecule that's going to carry the acetyl group, and that acetyl-CoA goes to the mitochondria and combines with a four-carbon molecule to give the molecule citric acid. That four-carbon molecule in the mitochondria is called oxalacetic acid. Then citric acid passes through a series of steps. So in the first step, it loses a carbon dioxide and becomes a 5-carbon ketoglutaric acid. And then the ketoglutaric acid loses a carbon dioxide to become a 4-carbon succinic acid. And that succinic acid gets rearranged back into oxalacetic acid, the one that you started with. In the process, you do generate one ATP, but mostly what you get are charged coenzymes, NADPH and FADH2. So if we animate it, pyruvic acid 
is going to lose a carbon dioxide. So we go from three carbons to two. The two carbon molecule that's left is called an acetic group. That acetic group gets picked up on, by coenzyme A, and coenzyme A finds oxalacetic acid and combines the two carbon acetic group with the four carbon, uh, yeah, oxalacetic to give you a six carbon citric acid. Citric acid loses the carbon dioxide to become ketoglutaric acid. Ketoglutaric acid loses carbon dioxide to become succinic acid. And succinic acid gets rearranged into oxalacetic acid. Most of the energy of glucose is still in the glucose. Most of the ATP has not been made. Well, actually, it's not in the glucose because the glucose is gone. It's in the electrons we harvested from glucose. And those electrons are going to go to an electron transport chain where they will be passed, like hot potatoes, from one carrier to the next. Each carrier is called a cytochrome. And each time they are passed from cytochrome to cytochrome, the energy that they give off is used to add a phosphate onto an ADP. Now, NAD goes in at the beginning of the electron transport chain, so you get a few more ATPs from NAD than you do for FAD. FAD goes in a little later. The last thing in the electron transport chain is an oxygen molecule. And when that oxygen molecule gets its electron back, it combines with hydrogen ions to form water. And remember, it was water that gave up an electron in photosynthesis to get uh, oxygen into the air. So in electron transport, we have a series of molecules embedded in a membrane called cytochromes that pick up high energy electrons from NAD, one down here with FAD, pass those electrons along, and as they pass those electrons along, the energy is used to put a phosphate on ADP to make ATP. And this continues until you reach the last cytochrome. The last cytochrome is going to give that electron to an oxygen, and the oxygen is going to combine with hydrogen ions to form water. And this is where we get the bulk of our ATP. So if we want to get 36, glucose, uh, 36 ATPs from a single glucose, we start with the first step of any respiration, glycolysis. In glycolysis, glucose is phosphorylated and the, broken in two, giving you two pyruvic acids and a couple of ATP. From there, we take those pyruvic acids to the uh, Krebs cycle. And in the Krebs cycle, pyruvic acid loses a carbon in the form of carbon dioxide to give you an acetyl group. And that acetyl group is picked up by coenzyme A. And coenzyme A carries the acetyl group to find a four carbon oxalacetic acid. The oxalacetic and acetic combine to give you six carbon citric acid. The citric acid loses the carbon dioxide, leaving a five carbon ketoglutaric acid. Ketoglutaric acid loses the carbon dioxide, giving you a four carbon succinic acid. And that four carbon succinic acid gets rearranged back to the starting point, oxalacetic acid. We got a few more ATP from this. But most of the ATP comes from the electron transport chain. When those high energy electrons attached to NADH and FADH come into electron transport chains and pass the electron onto cytochromes, as the cytochromes pass the electron from one to another, they use the energy to make ATP. The last thing to accept an electron in an electron transport chain is an oxygen. And when oxygen accepts that electron, it be, uh, combines with hydrogen ions to become a water molecule. 
There are times when oxygen is not available. Uh, for instance, when you are exercising, you may not get enough oxygen to your muscles to keep up with the amount of ATP you're using. And there are some organisms that don't have mitochondria, so they can't do the Krebs cycle and aerobic respiration. But they can, all cells can survive on glycolysis at least for a period of time. But in order to do that, they have to get rid of the products of glycolysis in a process known as fermentation. And there are two types of fermentation that we'll deal with, lactic acid fermentation and alcoholic fermentation. In lactic acid fermentation, you convert the pyruvate to lactic acid and the lactic acid diffuses away. In alcoholic fermentation, you break a carbon dioxide off the pyruvate and the two carbons you're left with are carbon di or, um, ethyl alcohol. Both of these have the same purpose, to get rid of pyruvic acid and keep glycolysis going. So in lactic acid fermentation, an organism that could use that pyruvate later, it has mitochondria, the three carbon pyruvic acid is converted to a three carbon lactic acid. That lactic acid diffuses away from the cell, but when oxygen becomes available, lactic acid can be converted back to pyruvic acid and used in the Krebs cycle. Now lactic acid causes muscle fatigue and it results in oxygen debt. We also use the process to make cheese. Lactic acid fermentation, glucose, phosphorylated and split into two pyruvic acids. generating some ATP for us. The two pyruvic acids are then rearranged to become two lactic acids. And that gets rid of the pyruvic acid and it regenerates NAD. If you're never going to use the pyruvic acid, there's no sense in converting it to another three carbon molecule. In alcoholic fermentation, organisms will break the glucose into two pyruvic acids, get their ATPs from that process, and then break a carbon dioxide off the pyruvate to give you carbon dioxide gas, and the liquid left will be two, two carbon ethyl alcohols. So if we are baking bread, we collect that gas, the carbon dioxide in the rising dough. If we are making beer, wine, or spirits, we collect the ethanol and use that. Both types of fermentation regenerate NAD and get rid of pyruvate to keep glycolysis going.